Welcome once again to South Suburban Spotlight here in the BCTV studios. I'm Sam Ekstrom. Today we celebrate a state tournament run for the Burnsville boys hockey team. We talk to their head coach, Yanni Kivi-Halmi, the goaltender, Nick Lee, and one of their top defensemen, Nolan Sachuk. But we begin the program with a Burnsville hockey lifer, the color analyst on BCTV hockey broadcasts. His name is John Mara, a veteran of how many hockey games do you think you've seen at Gary R. Harker Rink? I did the math on the back of a napkin, and uh, three kids over 23 years, probably 35 games a year, probably upwards of over 800 games, and then probably 700 practices on ice as a coach. Um, that's a lot of hot dogs and overpriced coffee, but I love staying at the rink. Well, you know, over all those games and all those seasons, you don't get many like the one we just had. And the last time we saw each other, we're walking into the XL Energy Center to watch Burnsville play in the, in the state tournament. What a run, what a run for this team. How special it must have been for them to play at the X. I think every kid growing up wants to play at the X for their high school team. It's a dream, right? And, and the whole experience of going there and practicing and being in the locker room and seeing the, the arena from a player's perspective to going up and getting in line and having your name announced in front of the camera and showing your flow and then Playing in front of 19,000 people plus hundreds of thousands of people on TV, that's just a, uh, what a thrill for the kids. One of the games we did on BC TV this year against Lakeville North seemed to be a turning point for me. It was a two to one loss, but it was taken on a team that had won the championship the year before. They took them down to the wire. And from that point on, this team just cruised their way to the state tournament. Yeah, it was a tremendous showing against a, a tough team, and I think you could even go back to their previous game where Lakeville North beat them pretty badly eight at three. Ames Arena. Yeah, after that they were eight three and one on their way to the playoffs. When they played Lakeville North, when we did that game, Burnsville took the lead late in the first and held it to late in the second, and it was only a, a Ryan Paling shorthanded goal that made the difference. But they stood up and they played them straight up. After that, they, they lost a tough game at Pryor Lake, 2-1, to one, they lost late, and then they won five games in a row, including two overtime games. So I, I, I would agree that their confidence was really, uh, from that point on, very high. You know, you've seen a lot of athletic seasons in your time following Burnsville. Did you know this senior class was going to be so successful, not only in hockey, but the football team goes and makes state as well. Yeah, I think football surprised me a little bit. I was more of a casual ob observer there. I didn't really follow the team as closely as I have in hockey. Uh, you know, I did watch a previous segment with Coach Krebs, and it all made sense to me then and on how they prepared for that. The boys team, they've been knocking on the door for ever since Yanni's been here. He, he got here in 2007. They made the state tournament. Ever since, they've been a threat to make it. They were just never able to get over that threshold. This senior class was special. They had a lot of success in the youth ranks and uh, playing together to have it all come true in their senior season, I think was really great to see. We'll take a quick break and be right back with BCTV color analyst, John Mira. Stay tuned. Welcome back to South Suburban Spotlight. Sam Ekstrom along with John Mara. And John, you know, you're usually the color guy for our broadcast, but we switched roles in the section championship game. You were on the play-by-play -play mic for one network. I was the color guy for another one. And you got to call, you lucky dog, a 7-1 to one section championship victory for Burnsville over St. Thomas Academy. I think we expected a good game. Didn't expect a blowout like that. Uh, that was a lot of fun, I got to tell you. And you know it was. Um... A special thanks to Town Square TV for giving me the opportunity and Jesse Stanga, their color commentator, had watched a lot of St. Thomas hockey so we had a little bit of knowledge of both teams and a little you know fun back and forth. Uh, that first period where they just kind of held their own and, and Nick Lee bailed them out a couple of times but they played pretty well but from that second period on after Eric Otto scored that first goal they never looked back and they just steamrolled and uh, uh, the whole game was fun to watch, but it just kept building and building. And, and I think uh, that third period was about as much fun as I've had uh, watching hockey in a long time. And 
especially uh, at the end of the game when they had that celebration. It was just great to see. I mean, a team that looked like they were playing inspired hockey, and you don't have to look far for the inspiration. You know, you've got Cole Borchard over there on the sidelines, you know, brother of Cade Borchard, who had a hat trick. What a story that is. Yeah, and I have to tell you, at the end, when they got the trophy and they skated over to Cole on the bench, uh, I had a little trouble keeping my composure. I was blub I blubbering in the background. And, um, you know, Cole was a big part of this program, one of the better players that have ever played at Burnsville. And had that horrible car accident where he was badly injured, um, and then the whole Burnsville Strong thing kicked in, and there was a bunch of support for the family. And when he was able to come to the rink, um, hats off for the coaching staff. They made him part of the team and he, he would talk between periods and, and count shots. And um, I think it was just a, a great, it was good for him and it was good for the family and it was good for the team. And I think it's just a great story. His brother Cade had 10 goals in the playoffs. Have you ever seen someone so locked in as Cade was? I, I don't think you've seen anything like that since um, um, Dave Spihart had three hat tricks in the state tournament. I was fully expecting him to go on a roll, and then uh, it, they play that first game against YZ, and who gets the first goal? It's Cade Borchert, and uh, he was playing with such confidence, and he's such a finisher. It was just, it was a lot of fun to watch that. I think what made the season so successful is that, you know, you've got teams like Lakeville North, like Edina, they're there every single season, but for Burnsville, this was overcoming that obstacle of winning the section, you know, getting somewhere they haven't been in a decade. And you look back, and I don't think the legacy will be you lost in the first round. It's going to be you made it there. Yeah, and their whole season, and every season, uh, hats off again to Coach Kivihami. He schedules a very tough schedule. So at the end of the year, you look at the Blaze record, it may not be gaudy, but they've played a lot of good teams tough. So they've, been, they've had a standard of excellence year after year. But getting over that hump and making it to the state tournament is special. And uh, it, to tell you the truth, they, they were ahead of YZ after one period and, and had outplayed them. And if it wasn't for a couple of defensive lapses, they could have, they could have run the table as well. So um, very impressive season by the Blaze. What's next for you? Uh, all your daughters have graduated now. Do you see yourself uh, continuing to follow the Blaze like you do? Well, after 23 years of hockey, I don't think I'll be able to wean myself right away. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll probably be back at the rink next year, maybe working the games for the school district like I did, and uh, certainly be cheering on the teams as they continue to play. John Mara, the BCTV color analyst for boys and girls hockey, kind enough to join us here on South Suburban Spotlight. Well, the Burnsville team didn't quite win the state hockey championship, but they did win another title. It's almost as important. We'll take a look at that coming up next. Next up, we have Nolan from Burnsville. That A on his chest is for arugula, because that's some spicy salad. Legends of the Fall look. Love that. What a warrior. At number one, I'm sure this will be controversial, but hockey's a team game, and what Burnsville did special. If you watch this, they're going to show how deep their lineup is. They're about to go back to back, beard, mullet, ginger, afro. That's like a hockey team going four lines deep. It's unbelievable. These guys are like a super group of salad. They are like the village people of hockey hair. Look at this, all in a row. Burnsville, love ya. Welcome back to South Suburban Spotlight. Sam Ekstrom here on the BC TV studios. We are here with Burnsville seniors Nick Lee, the goalie, and Nolan Sachuk, part of that top defensive pairing. Gentlemen, it's on spring break right now. How's everything going? Good. It's going good. Yeah. Yeah, a little tan, Nick, back from Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Just got back last night. So. Yeah, spent some time on the beach. Yeah, a lot of time. Is it weird to not have hockey scheduled for you right now? I mean, I'm guessing your the off-season program no longer applies to you guys. Yeah, it's a little different. Um, a lot more free time and a lot less like thoughts about, you know, what I'm going to do to get ready for the season. Just more relaxed days ago, a little more relaxed. So you guys got to play at the XL Center a couple weeks ago. I imagine it was a tremendous experience. Was it kind of odd, too, to adjust to that new playing environment with all the space and all the noise? Oh, for sure. It was way brighter, and the 
crowd and there's so so much going on in the crowd and there's so much going on on the rink it's just it's so hard to get used to yeah it was it was tough for the first five ten minutes of the game in the warm-ups you I mean you kind of look around and you just like see wow you just say wow like this is amazing there's so many people watching just our group of guys play hockey you know we've been growing up playing in these little rinks and then we play in this huge arena and it's it's crazy now, unfortunately, you weren't able to bring home the state championship hockey trophy, but you did win the hockey hair as a team. You know, you've, you've got Colton, you've got uh, Daniel, Braden, and Josh winning the title. And then you came in sixth, Nolan, with, with the long kind of Fabio locks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how much effort went into the hair? <laughs> it was a lot of effort. You'd be surprised how annoying it is to get ready and to have it just in your face all the time. <laughs> Nick, I can tell you've trimmed up since the tournament as well. I cut about eight inches off, probably. Um, it was a lot of preparation leading up. Was, I mean, you know, we knew we were going to make it this year. I mean, this was our year, so we're, we all kind of said to each other, all right, we're all growing out our hair. And everyone had some pretty good hair, I think. There was only a couple people with short hair. And, I mean, before the, before the introductions, everyone after warm was ran to the bathroom, started <laughs> fixing their hair, making sure it was perfect. And it was just pretty great. Nolan, I think the quote in the video was, A is for arugula, meaning the A on your on your jersey. A is for arugula, which means that's some spicy salad. When you saw the video for the first time, what was that reaction like? I didn't really know what to think. I mean, that's what I grew out my hair for, so I'm just happy that I made it. All the training came to fruition. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Was it frustrating to see Wyzetta go on and win the whole thing, or did it make you feel a little better? It was a little mix of both, I guess. I mean, losing to the team that won it, it still kind of stung. But in knowing that we were so close to beating the team that won it, so I don't know. It was kind of a mixture of feelings for me. Yeah, it's uh, it was good to lose to the champions, but I mean, it seems like if we would have won that game, we would have had a good shot since they took they we would have took the same path they did. So. On a happier note, though, the section championship against St. Thomas Academy was phenomenal. Did you did you think you had that in you to win by six goals? Uh, yeah, I knew we did. I mean, we we were playing so good at the end of the season. We were on an eight-game win streak, and we were all determined. I mean, the last section final where we lost to Edina, it stung a lot for the returning players. So I knew all of us were pretty determined to make it the state. Yeah, we made sure we were prepared for that game after the. After last year's section final, we weren't going to have that happen, and, and that was it was huge to come out and ready to go. Nick, I, I remember seeing the, the reaction video after that game got over, and you you were as excited as anybody, and then someone just came in and bulldozed you over. Who was that? That was Bjork. We scored our seventh goal, and I skated to the bench, and Dan Besser, our defensive coach, said to me, he goes, in the pile, make sure you don't get hurt. Make sure you're safe. And so, all right, I'm not, I wasn't going to do anything, so I didn't take my helmet off. I threw my gloves up, and I wasn't going to go on the pile. I was jumping up and down, and I didn't know where Bjork catches an edge, and he flies into my legs, and the next thing I know, I'm at the bottom of the pile, and I'm getting swished by everyone. Nearly a catastrophe. Yeah. <laughs> so when you reflect on the season years from now, do you think that's the moment you'll remember, Nolan? Not, not the state championship loss, but the way you got there. I think it's just the ex whole experience of making it to state, that will be for sure always be in my memory. Like that's the coolest thing, stepping on the ice for the introductions. It was unreal how many people were there and how many, how the, just the whole environment. We'll be right back with Nolan and Nick on South Suburban Spotlight. Stay tuned. Here's Borchardt again, and he's going to try for that hat trick, and he gets it! And there's the hats on the ice. This is the third hat trick for him in the playoffs. Yeah, Borchardt took the first shot. We can take a look at this. He took the first shot, and Capiza stopped one. that, and then he turned around and threw I've seen him score from behind the net a couple of times this year. Looks like he got it off the, maybe he hit it off his skate to get it in there. Welcome back to South Suburban Spotlight. Sam Ekstrom here with Nolan Sodchuk and Nick Lee. Nick, you're the goalkeeper. 
What inspired you to pursue that position? Um, actually, my cousin, uh, he's a goal, he was a goalie for Rozo in 07, the last time a Burnsville team made the state, and he was the goalie, and they won it that year, and, you know, he's family, and I always looked up to him. I mean, right as I made the transition from Mites to Squirts, I didn't really know what and then what I was going to do, and I went to watch one of his games, and he's, he was pretty good, so I was like, I need to, I want to play like this, I want to play goalie, yeah. I want to fall in his footsteps. Off the top of your head, best save of your career? Um, save against Lakeville North this year on the breakaway. I think it was against Henry Annabeck. It was kind of like a sprawling save. Um, he was on breakaway, and I kind of went down, and he kind of beat me on a fake shot, and I just kind of reached out with my glove, and it went right in my glove, and it was a pretty, pretty good feeling. Nolan, uh, defenseman. You don't always get the glory as a defenseman. You're not necessarily asked to score the goals that a Cade Borchard or an Eric Otto would, but you know, you're doing the dirty work on the blue line. What do you like about that position? I think just being able to see the whole rink and you look up and everybody's in front of you, make sure you can read the play easily and being able to kind of be the last guy back, well, besides the goalie, of course, to be the kind of solid, just stay back and keep the puck out of your net instead yeah. of scoring the goals, I guess. So Nick, have you ever been in the penalty box before? Um, sophomore year, I tripped a guy, but I didn't go. But um, so you don't know what it's like in there? No, I don't know what it's like in there. It's never been, never been in there before. I mean, the only time I was in there for tryouts, and then I just sit there and wait for my next shift to get on the ice, but that's it. I've never served a penalty ever. Have you ever had the temptation to shoot at an open net? Yes. Um, that is my life goal, to score a goal <laughs> at some point. Um, I haven't scored probably since Might 3, so it's about nine years. Probably going to be a little longer than nine years, but I'm going to hope I can score in men's league when I get older. We'll see, though. Nolan, hockey's a superstitious game. I, I kind of get that feeling. Who's the most superstitious guy on the team? Yeah, I mean, the goalies are always kind of weird, so they're kind of always really superstitious guys. I guess he doesn't like, he likes being like low-key pumped up, and he likes getting getting people going, and I don't know, he, he keeps to himself, but he's all, also like giving knucks to everybody else, so I say probably probably the goalie, probably Nick. Yeah, I kind of, I bring a water and a vitamin water to every game because that's when we started winning and when I brought two things. And then I always hit the posts in a certain order before every game. A lot of the guys, I mean, we did this little thing at the end of warm-ups where we jump in a pile. And so that was pretty superstitious. We did that ev almost after every game. So that, the team pretty much was that, that superstitious about that part. Who do you think your biggest rival is? Oh, it was always Pirate Lake. And because growing up also, they've always been in our district and in our section and conference or whatever. And so it was always, yeah, it was always them. Do you guys grow up in hockey families where it was kind of all about hockey? Yeah, yeah. my, my yeah. dad and my grandpa both played hockey a lot. You've got a sister who plays for the Blaze, right? Yep, yep. You have some fierce battles with Avery growing up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, on the outdoor rink, on the floor hockey, street hockey, everything. It was. It was always me against her. I got four years on her, so I guess it might have been a little, little not, not as equal, but it was still fun playing against her all the time for sure. Okay, your best Yanni quote. Uh, <laughs> Early is late. Do it in the accent, no. though. No. What Early is it? Is on time, on time is late. Early is on time, and on time is late. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Uh, I like the one waves after waves, waves after waves, <laughs> coming in waves after waves, not waves, waves, waves. <laughs> yep. Do you respect him a lot as a coach? Oh yeah. Yeah. For he knows sure. what he's talking about. Yeah. So what's next? You graduate, going to school? Yeah, I'm going to school and UW Lacrosse. We'll see. Room with one of my friends from school. We don't really know what I'm going to do yet, but looking forward to it. Yeah, and I'm kind of. Uh, I'm going to try to play junior hockey next year, so I won't be going to school next year, hopefully. Hopefully I'll be playing junior some, somewhere. So Climbing the ladder? Yeah, yeah, yeah trying to. Yeah. Yeah. Best of luck to both of you. Thank you. Thank what, you. what a season, uh, what a treat, treat to watch both of you. Thank yeah. you. 
That's Nolan Sotchuk and Nick Lee on South Suburban Spotlight. We'll be right back. To the left point, it is kept in by Thomas. Still loose on the left point. Kappas to Johnson for a 1-0. Johnson versus Lee. Stoned goal by Nick Lee, who stands on his head to keep the game tied. Curls up like a June bug when he when he swatted that one. That was oh. highlight reel worthy. Wow. Welcome back to South Suburban Spotlight. We're here with the Burnsville head coach, Yanni Kivihalmi. Thanks for having me. First question. Do you ever get sick of people mispronouncing your name? Uh, no, it, I'm uh, expecting that over here, so uh, um, I'm used to it. Okay. Tell me about growing up in Finland. How ingrained in the culture was the sport of hockey? Well, it's definitely a number one sport in the country. Um, you know, with the long winters, uh, the outdoor ice is always available, so it uh, along with the other winter sports, it's very common for people to get outdoors and play hockey, and that's kind of how I end up uh, starting my hockey career and and uh, just getting in and uh, playing outdoors, and then end up from there on joining the teams and things like that. What led to you settling in Burnsville? I came originally as exchange student. Uh, my primary focus was to learn uh, English. English was my weaker language in school. So, you know, what is the better way to learn it is to go to somewhere uh, where mm -hmm. it's spoken uh, consistently. And uh, that's what I end up doing. And, uh, you know, England could have been away, Australia could have been away, but uh, there's no hockey there. So it's either Canada or U.S. and end up coming to U.S. Did you always know you wanted to be a coach? Uh, I think I love the game. Um, I loved playing the game, and as I grew in, I, uh, as I looked at the coaches uh, that are, were coaching me, and uh, it, I ended up more getting into intrigue to it, and uh, interest grew as I got older, and uh, once I went to college, I knew what I was, uh, that was one of the things that I wanted to pursue. Do you have any coaching mentors, maybe, that you've watched in the NHL, or some personal mentors of, of yours? Well, I, I, I do have friends in Finland that I still uh, contact and talk uh, that were my coaches and my teammates. Uh, there's a, um, some of the uh, North American uh, uh, people that I have met through uh, that uh, I consistently work with. One is, for example, Todd Woodgrout. He's a director of scouting right now with the Calgary Flames, and I, we share uh, and exchange information through the course of the summers every summer and he works with actually works with our summer program as well so there's multiple different people my former coaches over here that i got contact along with the other high school coaches that i uh, talk and share information with you watch so many high school games you're coaching so many games do you ever get a chance to watch hockey you know watch the wild or uh, college games well of course you know i have uh, i obviously have the center ice package at mm, home so i get course. to watch uh, <laughs> as many games as I like to in my <laughs> spare time. And I do have a son who plays in uh, Division One college hockey, so I got to watch him play quite a bit. And uh, you know, also a lot of the Burnsville boys who've gone on to play uh, Division One and Division Three hockey uh, and minor league hockey. Um, and uh, so it's been a chance to excited to always catch up with them and watch them play. Have you followed Brock Besser at UND? Oh, of course, you know, he's, um, fabulous player and he's uh, making a name for himself and uh, we, you know we are obviously proud of him as a uh, being part of uh, Burns alumni. We'll be right back with coach Kivi Holmi for more talk about the Burnsville season that just concluded.
back with the Burnsville head coach, Yanni Kivihalmi, to talk a little bit about the state tournament run for the Burnsville boys and what a season it was, coach. And, you know, it didn't start maybe as some people would expect. I think you were 5-8-1, and one, and then you turned it around. What was the turning point this year? Well, uh, we actually go through the process that, uh, throughout the course of the year. It's a pretty much the same process that we use each year. Uh, you know, we form the team, then there's going to be parts of where we are storming, and then after that we get through the storming process, meaning the kids are competing for the spots and trying to find a good uh, a spot for each kid to have success, and then we start performing. You know, and then it depends on each each year is a little different when we're going to be hitting that, uh, when we're really going to kids are uh, plugged into the right spots, we feel. And this year it was around, you know, middle of January when we started uh, really uh, noticing the difference on how we are playing. You schedule a very difficult non-conference season. What's the logic behind that? Well, I think it's the big thing is it's, uh, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot from your team. You're going to learn a lot about uh, uh, character of the kids, uh, about each individual kid. You're going to learn about uh, things that you are already good at, the things that you can already continue to improve on, and things that also some weaknesses that you can address through the course of the year to continue to become more complete team. You have a pretty calm personality as a coach. Is that sort of your personality throughout life? Well, I think, uh, you know, the kids will take the personality of the coach. And that's kind of what we are looking at as coaches. I think we are hardworking guys and we hold each other as a coaching staff, hold each other accountable and work hard. And I think it feeds into the kids the same way. Um, I think if we are going to be screaming out there constantly, it's going to feed that kind of mentality. It's going to feed to our kids and we don't want that. You had run into a Dyna for several years in a row in that section championship. And this year you took down St. Thomas Academy pretty convincingly. How gratifying was that for you? You know, it was definitely, uh, you know, a long time that we've been on those uh, knocking on a door, trying to get through there. Uh, Edina has been a better team at those point, times point, but, uh, um, you know, uh, going in a different section, we pre 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 prepared the same way that we would do uh, on the, uh, any other year. And it was uh, obviously uh, exciting to get through finally. What makes the quotes uh, that you deliver so memorable to these players? Because it seems like you're just a, m a machine for inspirational uh, advice. Uh, I think it part, part of it is uh, the off-ice training. And, you know, you want to have fun at the same time. You know, you, kids, the kids have a lot of pressures as they go through, you know, the school. They have pressure winning and everything like that. But you got to, at the same time, have some fun with it and, you know, this... Uh, Having some quotes on your sleeve to throw in to make it an environment a little bit more positive and, um, uh, and put a smile on kids' face will be hopefully something that uh, they will take uh, for as they move on. Are you already itching to get forward to next season? Yeah, well, we already had our first meeting with the next year's captains, and the goal here is to uh, uh, get our summer program together and uh, to have the captains uh, to start working on their own uh, strength and condition program and and get back at it. So I'm itching to get, get at it again. A lot of seniors graduating. Who do you see stepping up next year? Well, I think uh, obviously our leadership group, the returning players, I uh, think this year they got a valuable group of uh, valuable experience through uh, the going through the sessions and going to the state tournament. And uh, um, uh, I think those players that uh, the captains, uh, the, the juniors who were juniors this year, that are going to be seniors are going to be definitely um, ex uh, looked at uh, as a leader and example of how we want to approach things. Well, it was super fun to cover you this year and watch you go to the state tournament. I certainly enjoyed it. Hopefully you did too. Uh, we appreciate you giving us the time. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Head coach Yanni Kivihalmi of the Burnsville Boys on South Suburban Spotlight. That's a wrap. I'm Sam Ekstrom. Thanks for tuning in.